It's time for some Collective Wisdom, a podcast advancing the cannabis revolution one conversation at a time. We all benefit from sharing knowledge and experiences. So if you want to learn about the business of cannabis from those in the trenches, you've come to the right place. Here's your host, Lisa Tolner, co-founder of SensiChew. Welcome to Collective Wisdom. Today, I would like to speak to you about how we can use the COVID-19 challenges to advance and accelerate the cannabis industry. Over the past three months, we've all experienced the strange and surreal changes brought on by the COVID-19 epidemic. The cannabis industry is already more complex than most other industries, and now it's gotten even more complicated. We've been called essential, and yet we receive no federal support. We are all trying to adjust quickly and adapt to this new changing landscape. Dispensaries appear to have been the most affected as they have shifted to curbside and delivery service, partially open or reduced store hours, a limited number of customers in the store at any one time, each depending on their county's quarantine regulations. So first I'd like to go over some of the negatives and changes that have impacted our industry. We now have less contact with people, which means less opportunities to build business relationships, which are vital to growth. We have increased workloads as many employees feel uncomfortable coming to work and increasing their risk of being exposed. We've experienced slowdowns in all aspects of the supply chain, which have slowed and affected not only existing business, but our ability to expand. There has been a reduction in vape pen sales, which are down due to potential risk of contracting the virus. There is additional work we have to do to maintain clean and safe work environments. Cannabis sales have been on a roller coaster since March, with great increases but also some decreases, which makes financial planning difficult. As long-term unemployment becomes a reality for millions of Americans, buying of cannabis will slow. Although we feel, and some studies show, that cannabis is somewhat recession-proof, if consumers are forced to put food on the table versus buy cannabis products, then we will certainly see reductions in revenue. It's just inevitable. There's been no reducing of excise tax, and consumers are returning to the black market, where they can get what they need more affordably. And even though cannabis has been deemed essential, we are still denied access to federal financial support, which even includes the CARES Act, which is designed for small business loans to help cover expenses, salaries, paid sick leave, and others. The Bureau of Cannabis Control does offer disaster relief, but I have yet to learn of a company taking advantage of this, and I hope to hear from the BCC soon. They have offered deferred license renewals until June 10th, but then what? COVID-19 is going to continue, at least till the end of summer, is what we're hearing from health experts. Well, as someone who has been in the cannabis industry since 2013, I can tell you that our ability to be resourceful and to persevere must continue. It has to. We have to be able to take whatever is thrown at us and come out on the other side better. And if we work together, we can even advance and accelerate the cannabis industry. We can make improvements from the messy, overregulated, overtaxed, underrepresented, misunderstood place that it's in now to a more modern, responsible, educated, and enlightened industry that it has the potential to be. And there is no success without a little hardship. So we've looked at the negatives of COVID-19. Now I'd like to look at the positive things that have happened since the epidemic. It's good to be an essential business, which means cannabis is gaining respect as a legitimate medical need. More research is getting underway for ailments triggered by the pandemic such as stress, anxiety, PTSD, and insomnia. More and more cities are accelerating and updating their local cannabis regulations, partly due to the fact that they need tax revenue. And as an essential business, it makes sense to support cannabis. Most, if not all, cannabis businesses have pivoted to use technology, which saves time and saves money. And with that technology, businesses can better access data to better understand how they can operate more effectively. Online sales are up, and this will likely stick, because why would consumers wait in line 
when they can have their product delivered. More brands are now having increased interaction with consumers as consumers are turning to the internet for education. Edible and beverage sales are up as consumers are looking for easy alternatives since there's less vape pen sales. Companies are adjusting their communication channels and getting creative with marketing. There is now greater awareness of conditions like stress and anxiety, again, due to the virus. Delivery services are on the rise, and it wasn't long ago that it was projected that delivery services were dying. Now the opposite is happening. Some are getting involved in communities with food drives and masks and sanitizer. Others have assembled crisis teams to help be prepared and safer for the future. Some legislation is finally getting passed, such as AB 2122, which provides stiff penalties for aiding and abetting unlicensed cannabis businesses. And not directly related to cannabis, but indirectly, with fewer customers driving to retailers, there are far less cars on the road, which makes for a healthier planet and bluer skies. So what is our takeaway from COVID-19? Our world will return to normal in some ways, but in other ways, the changes will be permanent. How can we take this pandemic and use it to improve our industry for the better? What can we focus on that will create a healthier cannabis ecosystem? We have to fight through these bad days to earn the good days ahead. I would love to hear your comments. Please send in your comments to info at ca collectivewisdom.com. This is your host, Lisa Tolner. Stay safe, stay positive, and be well. That's this week's episode of the Collective Wisdom Podcast. Join us each week for another episode on OC Talk Radio, streaming on Thursdays at 3 p.m., and you can download Collective Wisdom wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to visit cacollectivewisdom.com or email us at collectivewisdompodcast at gmail to join the conversation. Thank you for listening. 